ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Canal Algeria's news to the headlines. The rupture in Algerian-French relations is the goal of the French external security and this through secret agents, officials and French advisors of an Algerian region who do not hide their fondness of Al-Makhzen. Algerian nationals lost their lives in Hatay province in the south of Turkey following the devastating earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria. In a race against time, civil defense members are doubling up the efforts to save more victims stuck under the rubble and to slow down the rise in the death toll, now close to 20,000 victims. Lastly, an expert panel at the level of the European Parliament dedicates a meeting to the advocate sanctions following the Pegasus spying scandal. Good evening, those are tonight's headlines. First in our news, the French intelligence no longer hide their plans filled with maliciousness, which will eventually lead to the rupture in the Algerian-French relations. A woman, not a journalist nor a militant, does not have any quality that can justify what the French side committed, was exfiltrated to France, and within 48 hours, she was received and unable to speak on public television channels, reflecting the goal of the general mobilization of the French intelligence to its agents. Pig's Bay scenario cannot be repeated. The plan at the level of the French General Directorate of External Security to undermine Algerian French relations does not go unnoticed. It is being implemented by secret agents and some officials at the level of the General Directorate of External Security of France, the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as some French advisors of Algerian origin who do not hide their fondness for El Makhzen. It is unfortunate to see everything that has been built between President Tebboune and Macron to to open a new page between the two countries collapsing. And the rupture does not seem that far anymore. On the same topic, this act is described by Algeria as unacceptable. In fact, Algeria has condemned this illegal exfiltration of an Algerian national to France and considered it as transgression against the national sovereignty of our country. More details with Rania Bahari. Once again, France takes to its traditional positions towards Algeria and violates the diplomatic standards existing between sovereign states. This move comes after small progress in bilateral relations following the last state visit, paid by the French president to Algeria last August. The secret exfiltration of an Algerian national who is banned from leaving the national territory by order of the Algerian judiciary is a blatant violation of international relations. This is a resounding scandal for France, and it proves another successive failure of French diplomacy. And today it cannot be given any characteristic within the diplomatic work, as it is reprehensible and denies international norms, as well as diplomatic relations. This is irresponsible, unjustified, and non-constructive move, and it will weaken Algerian-French relations. We are fully aware of narcissistic movement of certain parties in France, which still dream of colonial narcissism, which is almost repeated on many occasions. And perhaps this is one of them. Looking also at the Algerian-French relations, especially in the colonial period, we found that this is a common habit in almost treaties and agreements. We can classify this act today as betrayal of the promise. This this act is a blatant violation of the diplomatic standards and it's totally rejected by Algeria, which considers it as a blow to its national sovereignty. Countries are equal in sovereignty and it is not allowed for a country to rob legal procedures practiced by another country under pretext that citizen bears its nationality. What these diplomats committed is considered an attack on national sovereignty because this citizen is Algerian and crossed the borders of his country illegally and was supposed to be returned to his country. So this is considered an attack in international law. This move, which occurred by the Mujahid newspaper, indicated that the French colonial policy is angry on the whole continent, and this incident will have negative impact on relations existing between the two countries.
To national memory, where the Minister of War Veterans and Right Holders, Slade Erbiga, supervised the awarding ceremony of the winners in the 27th edition of the 1st of November 1954 award, which comes as part of the festivities commemorating the 60th anniversary of independence. Within the framework of the follow-up on the situation of members of the Algerian community residing in the Republic of Turkey and the Syrian Arab Republic, especially in the areas affected by the earthquake that struck the two brotherly countries, and in coordination with the Algerian embassies both in Ankara and Damascus, and the Consulate General in Istanbul, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, informs that two Algerian nationals lost their lives. Both Samiha Sarayri, 44 years old, and her daughter Hadil Bar 13 years old. Their bodies were recovered in the city of Iskander in Hatay province in southern Turkey Thursday afternoon and their identities were confirmed. Thursday evening the services of the Consulate General of Algeria in Istanbul in coordination with the Turkish authorities began the proceedings to transport their bodies to Istanbul and initiate the necessary procedures in order to return them to the homeland where the Algerian state will cover all the expenses of transporting their bodies. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the national community abroad extends its sincere condolences to the family of the two deceased, the deceased, praying God Almighty to grant them his vast mercy and to grant their families patience. After the two devastating earthquakes in Turkey, civil defense units are fully mobilized and doubled up the efforts to save more victims stuck under the rubble. The coverage is by Abdul Jabir bin Yahya and the commentary is by Sabrina Tefriginit. Pulling out victims out of the rubble is the top priority now. All the means are deployed to save people and rescue them from all the heavy weight and catastrophe on their shoulders. Turkey and Syria most affected the regions from the violent earthquake witnessed an absolute nightmare. But hope is still an option. The earthquake shocked us at 4 a.m. Our house is partially destroyed. There's been deaths and injuries. It's a total chaos. People are dying under the rubble. The death toll continues to rise, but so was the humanitarian aid. Algerian rescue teams to Turkey and Syria are working hours and days to save lives. The paramedics teams and doctors sent are deploying all the medical assistance and support needed. I thank the civil defense units and our Algerian brothers for the help. We are saving the most victims out of the rubble, and it reflects the high professionalism of our teams that are putting all the efforts in this catastrophe. Our units work day and night and are very caring and attentive with the citizens in order to save their loved ones and are working according to a rescue plan aiming to save most lives. The Algerian aid sent for these two badly affected countries are saving lives on a daily basis. Rescue and relief operations are being 24 hours a day performed, a way to reduce the rising casualties of this violent catastrophe. Partnership was established between the Higher Education and Scientific Research Ministry as well as the Knowledge Economy Startups and Microenterprises Ministry to encourage students to create their own companies. This strategy was put forward during the last Council of Ministers by the President of the Republic. Manal Amari has more. In order to help students develop digital technology to innovate and launch their own projects, Partnerships were developed between various universities and the Ministry of Knowledge Economy and Startups through the creation of incubators to enable students to launch their projects from university. This process was encouraged during the last Council of Ministers by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboon, who also encouraged the reinforcement of the cohesion observed between the sectors of higher education and startups hailing the unification of efforts to benefit the national economy. The president commended the progress achieved within the startups and microenterprises sector, which is attractive to young competences and which contributes to the creation of employment and wealth. The president also commended the progress achieved within the startups and microenterprises sector, 
which is attractive to young competences and which contributes to the creation of employment and wealth. The new investment law and the new entrepreneur code are a set of measures that could help young entrepreneurs to create their own startups and micro enterprises in order to fully contribute to the development and diversification of the national economy. As part of Algeria's plans to develop renewable energies field, including solar energy, the first pilot station dedicated to the storage of this energy is created. The more with Sabarin Tafirginit. Algeria is opting for and moving towards clean energies. This approach comes under the framework of reviving the country's economy. For that, the first pilot plant has been created and aims to store solar energy. <laughs> It's a pilot station with an independent solar system that can be used to power electronic devices. This system has batteries which can be charged from the solar energy stockage. It is used at night and in winter. Ismail and his colleagues put a lot of work and determination in the development process of this pollution-free energy project for it to reach its best technological potential and performances. In this laboratory, we are in charge of transforming solar energy into an electrical one and insert it into Sonal Gaz Electric Network, a process that respects the international standards. Given more importance to energy transition and PV industry, while encouraging the concerned researchers, reflects the determination of the government to upgrade, develop and produce renewable energies. In his capacity as a representative of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the National Community Abroad, Rantan Lamamla, took part on Thursday in the 32nd Summit of the African Peer Review Mechanism via video conference. Confirmed, the minister confirmed that Algeria supports independence and development in Africa. The Palestinian Minister of Interior, Ziad Mohammed Mahmoud Mohammed Habarih, finished the working visit to Algeria. At the VIP lounge of the Algiers International Airport, the Palestinian Minister of Interior held talks with the Algerian Minister of Interior Local Collectivities and Territory Planning, Brahim Rad, during which he reiterated the strength of the relations between both countries, hailing Algeria's strong position in support of the Palestinian cause. The proceedings of the third session of the Algerian-Hungarian Economic Joint Commission in Budapest kicked off on Thursday, and this under the co-chairmanship of the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Abdel Hafid Hanni, and his Hungarian counterpart. Many cooperation and partnership files between Algeria and Hungary, and the perspectives of its promotion in various domains and sectors of development in both countries will be discussed in this session. On the second day of his working visit to Algeria, at the head of an important military delegation, Michel Langlier, commander of U.S. Africa Command, AFRICOM, was received this Thursday, 9th of February, by the head of the Employment Preparation Department of the High Command of the National People's Army, Major General Hasnat Bilqasim, at the National Army Circle, where they held a working session combining delegations of both countries. During this meeting, both parties discussed issues of common interest and exchanged points of views on means and ways to consolidate and develop military cooperation between armies of both countries. An expert panel was held to study the advocate sanctions at the European Parliament and to better understand this corruption scandal. Amina Haidar was called as a witness alongside two French journalists. According to experts, these Moroccan derivatives will not be disregarded. Report by Afaf Boulouchet, commentary by Amina Lamari. An experts panel hosted the second meeting of the PEGA committee devoted by the European Parliament to the spying scandal through the use of the Zionist spyware Pegasus, a case of unprecedented gravity, as was affirmed by this expert. In my opinion, it's becoming very serious, and I believe that the European Committee, the EU's executive body, the Parliament and the Council of the European Union won't let this scandal go by. The first panel was devoted to the Moroccan case, with the Sahrawi activist Aminatou Haidar as a main witness, in addition to the intervention of two French journalists who investigated this case. However, the session had to be suspended 
due to technical issues, which did not allow the two journalists, Rosa Moussaoui from the L'Humanité newspaper and Zerouki from the Le Monde newspaper, from intervening. Following their work on the investigation, which revealed the large-scale use of this spy software by Morocco, nevertheless, the committee's president suggested another meeting, which will be organized in Strasbourg next week. After this suspension, the session was resumed, this time focusing on the Zionist entity's case, while waiting to gather experts on the Moroccan case, starting next week at the Parliament in Strasbourg. With that, our news edition comes to a close. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.